G'day and welcome to Redriven. Now, the Audi A4, when used, is something of a mysterious car because if you believe the fans, the marketing hype, and really any of the reviews of these when they were new, this is a fabulous car. But the flip side of that, and an opinion shared by many on the internet, is that when these are used, they're crap. And Audi as a brand is just a fancy schmancy Volkswagen that some people are willing to pay way too much money for. They're not our words, that's genuinely a quote we read when we were doing the research on this. But which is it? Is the A4 crap or is it any good? What goes wrong with them? What do they cost to own and operate? What do they like to live with on a daily basis? And most importantly, should you buy one? Let's find out. Now before we get deep into the B8A4, I should mention that in this video we're going to be focusing on the Australian delivered variants of the A4, but if you're not from Australia, don't freak out or panic because everything we're going to be going over should relate to A4s in your local market. Also, we won't be focusing on the S4 or the RS4 models in this video because, let's face it, those two cars deserve a video all of their own. But the thing is, a lot of the features in those cars also feature in the more standard A4. So if you are in the market for an S4 or an RS4, keep watching the video because I think you'll enjoy it. Also, to keep this video as objective as we possibly could, we've reached out to multiple Audi owners groups, Audi-specific technicians and mechanics, European car specialists and mechanics, and we've trawled through what feels like days worth of research and reliability reports and consumer reports. So this video is basically the culmination of all of that and their information and knowledge and expertise. Now the B8 A4 has been available as either a sedan or a wagon or a saloon or an Avant according to Audi, that's how Audi called them. And it's been around since around about 2008 to 2015 and there was like a midlife update in 2012 which is called the B8.5. But for a quick overview of the B8 A4 range, here's me doing a voiceover. The A4 has been available here in Australia in a bewildering range of variants and depending on the trim spec, featuring engines from four to six to eight cylinders, all of which can vary depending on the year, some with forced induction, some naturally aspirated in either diesel or petrol. Transmission options include a CVT or an auto or a manual, sending power to, again, depending on the variant, to the front wheels or via Audi's Quattro all-wheel drive system. Then there are the different aesthetic versions of the A4, like the all-road Quattro, which is basically an A4 wagon with an increased ride height and added plastic cladding and some underbody protection. Then there's all the different trim specs that just confuse the entire range even more. Actually, you want to see how convoluted this range is? Check this out. You can have your A4 as a 1.8T, a 1.8T Quattro, a 1.8 TFSI Sport Edition, a 1.8 TFSI S-Line LE and S-Line Plus, and a 1.8T S-Line, which could only be had as a Quattro depending on what month of the year it was. Then there's the 2.0, the 2.0 Sport Edition, the 2.0 TFSI, the 2.0 TFSI S-Line Sport Plus, the 2.0 SE, the ever-popular 2.0 TFSI Quattro, the 2.0 TFSI Ambition Quattro, the 2.0 TFSI S-Line, but that wasn't available as a Quattro until 2013, of course. Then you have the 2.0 TDI, the 2.0 TDI E, 2.0 TDI Ambition Quattro, 2.7 TDI, 3.0 TDI Quattro, 3.0 TFSI Quattro, 3.2 FSI, and obviously the 3.2 FSI Quattro, plus the 3.2 FSI Quattro S line, the All Road Quattro LE, and obviously the S4 and the RS4, all of which will vary depending on if it's a sedan or a wagon, sorry, saloon or Avant. Then, as with the majority of luxury brands, all of these variants could be customised to a certain degree, with a plethora of different optional extras from tech packs to safety packs to various visual options. And guys, look, obviously we'd love to go into every specific detail of every variant and upgrade and range model, but that would just take days to go through. The thing is, but we have gathered all of that information and we've put it in our very handy and free Redriven Cheat Sheets. Our cheat sheets are invaluable as they provide a full breakdown of the car's model range, its common problems, what you need to look out for before handing over your hard-earned cash, how much of that cash you should be handing over, and so much more. Check it out at redriven.com or in the link below. Now guys, if you already own a B8 A4 or you're a B8 A4 expert, and if you notice in this video that we've missed something major, please let us know in the comments. Obviously, we're going to do our best to cover as much as we can in the video, but if we have missed something major, let us know. So how's the exterior? Well look, from a design point of view, obviously looks are subjective. Personally, I really like these. I love the performance variants, especially the performance variants when they're a wagon or an Avant. But what do you think? Do you like the looks of it? 
let us know in the comments. Now, if you are in the market for one of these things, there are a few things you need to watch out for. First up, as many A4s spend most of their lives in built up suburban and metropolitan areas, they can be hit with a few trolleys or even bad drivers. So make sure you go over the entire car for any dents or scratches. They're not deal breakers by any means. But the thing is, the previous owners sometimes can cut corners when it comes to repairing them. So make sure you go over the entire car and look for dodgy repair work. Any paint that looks like it's kind of like, a, like an orange peel kind of texture. If it's had major damage, walk away. Slight damage, extra bargaining power. Also, as these are becoming more and more affordable, we'll get to what they cost in a second, some not so socially responsible people are starting to buy them and they sometimes think that these are a serious performance car and they drive them far beyond the cars and their own driving limits. Therefore, they can have some pretty big accidents. A good way to check for any accident damage or worse, dodgy repair work is overspray and the panel gaps. Go over the whole car, are all the panel gaps accurate? Pop the bonnet, look inside the air vents, look up under the wheel arches. If there's any signs of overspray, just walk away. Now, there are some common faults and issues with these things, but we'll get to those in a little bit. Okay, so how's the interior? Well, look, no surprises here. From a design aspect, the interior is gorgeous. This car is getting on a little bit. It's a, kind of a couple of generations old now, but it still feels really nice. Like, heaps of nice squidge everywhere. A lot of the touch points feel, still feel really, really good. Yeah, beautiful interior from a design aspect. But from a wear and tear aspect, it is feeling its age, like the gear selector here, the leather's going a bit sort of funny on the steering wheel, it's kind of degrading a little bit here. Even some of the switch gear just feels, yeah, starting to get a bit of movement to it. Although the seats are fantastic, like the leather on the seats haven't gone too shiny and gross and still feel quite soft. Even down here, like where your arm sort of normally hangs out and here, that still feels really, really good. So yeah, it's showing its age, but not too badly. Now also with the seats, look, I personally find these really, really comfortable, but when we were doing the research for this, quite a few owners were complaining, complaining that they didn't find the seats very comfy. So if you are in the market to buy one of these, make sure you take it on a really long test drive to see if you get a bit of a, a numb bum or a sore back. Personally, I think they're delicious. Okay, in the back seat, I'm 6.06 .06 Phil Collins face value albums tall, obviously in vinyl because I'm a pretentious wanker. This is in my seating position and really good. Heaps of knee room, good amount of headroom, good amount of shoulder room. But these have to be the firmest rear seats I've sat in in a long time. I don't know if the seats have been working out and they're very, very muscular, but there's like no give to the back seat. It's a bit uncomfy. Wear and tear wise, excellent. The leather still feels good even though it's firm. Even the plastics on the backs of the seats are in fantastic condition. All down here, this is excellent. Door card's great. Wear and tear, 10 out of 10. So how's the tech? Well, what tech you get in this is gonna vary widely depending on the year, the trim, the spec, all that sort of stuff. There are heaps of different options. But for a quick overview, here's me doing a voiceover. The tech you can expect in an A4 will feature a 10 speaker stereo, a 6.5 inch multifunction screen, a CD player, cruise control, climate control and a trip computer with features like Bluetooth connectivity, sat nav, a Bose or Bang & Olufsen sound system, Zenon headlights and electric seats all making an appearance as either optional extras or standard kit, again depending on the year and trim spec. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto didn't officially make it to this generation of A4, but they can be relatively easily retrofitted with aftermarket gear. But for what A4 has which levels of tech, just jump on readdriven.com and check out the cheat sheets or click in the link in the description below. So is it practical? Well, yeah, the boot's bloody huge. It's fantastic. And obviously the wagon or Avant versions are even more practical than this. But I should mention, depending on the model, some of the seats don't fold down. So if you do need you know, a bit of cargo space area and you need a sedan, just be careful because yeah, some of the seats don't fold forward. Weird. Practicality in the back seat, you've got some okay sized door bins here. You've got your own air vents. There's an armrest just here. And because smoking is gross, they've tried to hide the cigarette lighter and the ashtray here under these little plastic flippy bits, but there's no hiding it because that's gross. And practicality up front, you've got a good little bin here for storage. You've got an awesome, perfect spot for your mobile phone just here. The cup holders are fantastic because I'm a bit of a wanker and drink small pretentious coffees. These little sort of fingers that hold on to the coffee, they hold it like the trophy of goodness that it is, which is fantastic. That goes there. There's a spot here for a cigarette lighter and ashtray if you're a smoker. 
gross. Stop it. It's disgusting. Uh, really good size glove box there. And the door bins are the perfect size for a redriven water bottle and a bunch of other stuff. Actually, if you like the redriven water bottle and you like the redriven shirts and you'd like one of these or one of these, let us know in the comments because we're thinking about selling these. Let us know. Besides that for practicality, nothing up there, nothing down there. That's it. Pretty good. Okay, what goes wrong with these things? Look, we'll get to the mechanical stuff in a second, but let's start with the exterior. Now, there are reports of rust impacting around the wheel arches, both the front and the back, and around the rear tailgate. It's not a common issue, especially in climates like Australia, and it mainly affects cars before the 2012 update. But yeah, check there, check back there, and around the tailgate. Okay, next up, cars fitted with a sunroof. There are quite a few reports that these sunroofs can leak and potentially even flood the interior of the car. The problem is, is that all the drainage channels, they, they clog up over time, and even the grommet on the actual piping, they can crack and fall apart. Basically, water's got nowhere to go. It'll generally destroy the, uh, like the headlining of the car. Eventually, it'll kill the electronics and the motors controlling the sunroof, which also has a negative impact on all of the car's electronics. Worst case scenario, it can fill the footwells up with water, which will do more electronics electrical and potentially computer damage and to repair all this will cost thousands of dollars. There are now plenty of reports that the door locks are beginning to fail, either locking you out or just not locking at all. On the Avant and all-road models, the rear windscreen wiper mechanism, they're starting to fail as well. Again, the problem is it leaks water into the electronics and the motor, fries everything, thousands of dollars to fix it. We're starting to see that the windscreen washing water reservoir is beginning to crack with age. The problem is it just leaks water out everywhere, so you're left with no water to wash your windscreen. Not good. Okay, common problems and issues with the interior. Honestly, not too many, as long as the sunroof hasn't flooded the interior with water. Then you're gonna have some problems with it. But in saying that, there are a few reports that the electric park brake and the air conditioning can get a bit glitchy and faulty. Also, the infotainment systems, depending on the generation, are known to be a bit glitchy and faulty, but that can generally be resolved with a software update. Now guys, before we get into mechanically what goes wrong with these things, can I ask a favor? If you're enjoying this video, can you please hit the like, subscribe, and bell button and share this video as much as you can because the more you do of all that, the more of these videos we can make and we'd love to keep making these videos. Now mechanically what goes wrong with the A4? Well, I'm not a mechanic so I'm not qualified to tell you, but Jim is. This model A4 has literally dozens of engine and transmission combinations and they all have their fair share of problems. For a general idea of what they're like, you could just take into account that Statistically, in terms of dependability, Audi are in the lower half of all manufacturers. Engine-wise, the diesels suffer from all the same problems that most common rail diesels suffer from. DPF problems, EGR problems, turbo complications, injector seal issues, and coolant and oil leaks. The petrol engines are probably the smarter choice because when something goes wrong, they are gonna be marginally cheaper to fix. Overall, the engines are fairly reliable. Uh, by that, what I mean in terms of they'll get you to where you wanna go without a catastrophic engine failure, but most of them do have oil consumption issues, so you're probably gonna to have to top up the oil every few thousand Ks just to be sure. In the workshop on a day-to-day -day basis, what problems do we see? Um, in the petrol versions, this has gotta be by far, can you see that? the most common problem we see. Uh, it's another victim of feeble engine bay plastics. Uh, these water pumps fail frequently. Uh, and it's one of those parts where we've discovered that some of the non-genuine versions of these actually outlast the genuine Audi product. So if you have one and you're getting it repaired, maybe not insist on the genuine Audi part. And speaking of the prices of genuine parts, it's worthwhile in some cases checking the equivalent part in a Volkswagen or Skoda catalog, because in some cases you can save yourself big bucks on the same part. Other than that, the petrol engines can suffer from timing chain problems, PCV complications. They can also suffer from injector failure, coil pack failure, and just general engine bay wiring harness problems. We also see a few problems in their HVAC systems. We see problems with their fan blower motors and their fan speed resistors. We see problems with their blend door actuators. We see wheel speed sensor problems, and we also see power window and door lock actuator problems. It's important to recognize that all car manufacturers have all the same problems from time to time. But when you compare these problems to say something Japanese with the same age and mileage, we see more of these problems more frequently in European manufacturers, including Audi. 
So is it safe? Well, the A4 scored a perfect five-star safety rating score with both ANCAP and NCAP, but that was back in 2008. But for a quick overview of what the A4 has in terms of safety tech and equipment, here's me doing a voiceover as fast as I possibly can. The A4 will come equipped with <gasps> dual front airbags, side airbags, overhead airbags, ABS, electronic brake force distribution, stability control, traction control, brake assist, seatbelt pretensioners, anti-whiplash head restraints, while optional blind spot monitoring, lane keep assist, and rear side impact airbags were also available. So what's it like to drive? Well, this is the 2.0 TFSI Quattro S-Line, and performance-wise, it's, uh, yeah, it's bloody great. So this is kind of, sort of, kind of like a Volkswagen Golf R in a sedan body. Look, I know it's way more complex than that, but it kind of, sort of is. So the performance is fantastic. This thing really gets up and goes. I'd actually argue that I think this is the perfect amount of performance for a car on Aussie roads. Like it's, it's quick enough to grab your attention, but not so fast that it's gonna grab the attention from the boys in blue. Ride quality after you know many years and thousands of kilometers, it's still great, like it's really comfortable, quite luxurious, it's still kind of sporty enough to, you know, make you enjoy the drive. Like there's no horrible sounds or rattles going on, not much road noise, not much wind noise, lovely. The transmission does that typical early generation dual clutch thing where it sometimes has a bit of a spasm in traffic and it can be a bit slow to know what the hell's going on, but once you're up and running, excellent. The steering is that typical Volkswagen, sorry, Audi, you know, kind of dead inside, absolutely no feel, but it is light and yeah, it's pretty accurate. Look, overall, this is a bloody lovely place to be. It, it feels classy and important without making you feel like a pretentious wanker. The pricing here in Australia kicks off from as little as four and a half thousand dollars, but a four and a half thousand dollar A4 absolutely terrifies me. At the other end of the spectrum, you're going to be looking at around about 40 grand for a super schmick example. Something like this, a 2013 2.0 TFSI Quattro S-Line in pretty good condition with a perfect service history, going to be looking around about twenty-five, twenty-six thousand dollars $26,000. And for pricing elsewhere on the planet, here's a graphic. Audi claim a fuel consumption figure of anywhere between 4.8 to 10.2 litres per 100 k's, depending on engine, petrol, transmission, body type, all that sort of stuff. This car is claimed at 6.7 litres per 100 k's, but what it gets we have no idea because we just spent, I reckon, about 30 minutes trawling through the menu to try to find where the bloody fuel consumption is, and you can't find it because it's the most stupid convoluted menu system, and if you try and do it with a door open, it just constantly beeps and bongs at you. Crap, Audi. Audi offered its typically underwhelming three-year unlimited kilometre warranty on all A4s, meaning these are all well and truly out of warranty now. Servicing is recommended at every 12 months or 15,000 Ks, but as Jim alluded to, a lot of these will be visiting mechanics far more often than that. Also, if you're planning on working on your A4 yourself, don't fall for all the marketing hype and crap around genuine Audi parts, because most of the components in these are shared across the entire Volkswagen range, including you know cheaper brands like Skoda. Most of the parts will be transferable between models, so just find what that model number is and go and buy the Skoda part or the Volkswagen part, because it'll probably save you some money. Granted, some of the components are specific to Audi, but honestly, not many. Okay, so should you buy one? Look. Chances are, if you're in the market for one of these things and you really, really want one, you're gonna buy one regardless of what we say. But guys, please be careful. See, the wrong A4, and we're talking about any A4 with a patchy or missing service history, any question marks hovering over it in terms of mechanical issues or potential accident issues, or an A4 that has clearly been used and abused, we can almost guarantee will be far more of a headache than you're anticipating and could potentially cost you thousands of dollars just to keep it on the road. Look, yes, the A4 can be a good car, but the negatives surrounding questionable examples just blow any positives out of the water. Do not buy an A4 if you have even the slightest concern about its condition or its history. I can't say this enough, don't buy that car. But let's say you find a single or second owner A4 and it's in pristine condition and it has a full and thorough service history and it's a higher spec model and it's loaded with optional extras, plus it's a really, really good price. Then should you buy one? Look, probably not. 
Look, there are just other cars out there that offer an equivalent driving experience, the same levels of fancy schmanciness, and they come with a far more robust reputation for reliability. And look, yes, they do start with L and end with Exus. But like, we do get why you would love an A4. If you can find an example like this, which is, let's be honest, a bit of a unicorn example, Okay, yeah, buy it, but guys, just know that the, the cost of maintenance and upkeep could be exorbitant at best. Great car when they work, but guys, you've been warned. Thank you so much for watching. What did you think of the A4? Let us know in those comments. Oh, remember, can you please hit those like, subscribe, and bell buttons, and reshare this video, and just spread the Redriven name as much as you can, because the more you do with all of that, the more of these videos we can make, and we'd love to keep making you guys the best content we possibly can. See you next time. Put it in our very handy and free Redriven cheat sheets. horses from a design aspect look obviously looks uh object uh, 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 here we go yeah it looks uh objective subjective <laughs> sorry sam i'm sorry here we go all right so you bastard it's getting louder dude come on horses and leaf blowers there are now plenty of reports that the door locks are starting to fail you, you Here we go. Don't fall for all the marketing crap and hype around Audi genuine parts. As m <sighs> Also, if you're planning on working on your A4 yourself, don't fall... Come on, Morris. Here we go. Planning on working on your A4 yourself, don't fall... <sighs> Here we go. Okay, guys, it's a great car when it works, but you've been warned. You stupid piece of shit truck. I had big American trucks.